Hello, hello. All right. So this is going to be a today's topic video. It is for the 29th. Um, just so you know, I already did record one and it's still going to be processing because it got a bit long. Um, I'll release that later as just a bonus, but I like these to usually come out in advance because not everybody is in the same time zone that I'm in. That's why I always release these in advance, but we're still behind. So the one that comes out at midnight will be for the 30th. This one is for the 29th. All right. So we've got the Knight of Cups in the reverse for our leading message. So on the 29th, our big message is hmm, somebody has lost interest in or lost emotional satisfaction. They could be looking for emotional satisfaction and they can't find it. Um, the Knight of Cups, <coughs> it can certainly be water energy. Um, it looks like even if that card had been upright, that was a pretty messy little melted knight, right? So it was never fully formed, which the knights aren't. The knights are our action takers. They're the explorers. But right now, it's almost like somebody goes, I don't see anybody that I want. Nobody's turning me on. <laughs> we have a five of cups. Could be that nobody's turning them on because they have been over and over and over again, breaking their own heart. This could be a divine masculine who has been very rooted in a place that's not very fertile. And moon after moon, maybe year after year, this could, instead of just representing like five months, it could represent five years. They have continued to feel disappointed because look at where they're at. I mean, we have like a, I guess it's an aloe plant <clears throat> growing out here in the desert somebody's very disappointed, but I feel kind of like it's their own actions that are doing this. We have page of pentacles. We have ace of swords. Okay. I have to say the storyline is not starting out that vastly different from the other story that I will release as soon as it's done processing, but we'll see. It, 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 we're seeing like a different side of that story. We have a masculine who seems to be very, disillusioned, very disappointed, and yet without clarity on what action to take. So we have a statue of a feminine. I'm sorry, I have to kind of cover her up because our statue doesn't have clothes on, but she's disjointed. She's got arms in the wrong place. Uh, we have like a busted cello with the wire wrapped all the way around this. We have what should be like, you know, when we look at a checkerboard, I either look at it like a chess game or I look at it like, you know, geometrics. Um, but more than anything, it's like, this is black and white. This is, you know, factual versus not factual. But you notice how even the checkerboard is is kind of oh, an odd mismatched blend. So if they were trying to figure out what to think, what to do about a situation, the more they think about it, the more it's they can't find the answer as to what they think um the cello to me like any instrument reminds me like of music love songs words that we would say i feel like this person really struggles to find words i feel like they struggle to figure out how to express them it also seems like they've been so dis to all the confusion and it seems a statue in their mind like they remember her they may remember her without clothes on but there's no warmth they feel like she's not exuding any warmth toward them but they can't get over her and with this ace of swords there's a truth coming in a truth of either they need to let go of this because this is what's dragging them down or that they need to quit being silent and confused and just say what is it that they really need to get off their chest ace of swords is action and communication that you know really can free things up robin thank you for being here angel <coughs> knight of swords pick up that phone even if it feels crazy okay so this is the dada phone okay so dadaism was a kind of art that kind of like i guess 
it's definitely surrealism, but it kind of almost predates that a little bit. It came about after like World War One or kind of during because especially the artists got really frustrated with the fact that, you know, we had the Victorian era where everything was prim and proper, like to the nth degree. And then this prim and proper world where there's rules and regulations of society, then we can go and march into a war where it's, you know, barbaric. And it's like the, you know, how, or how as a society do we have these highly civilized rules and regulations and a lot of like suppression of like natural, um, you know, even like, uh, romance and sexuality was heavily suppressed, you know, kind of during that Victorian era. And then we go into this barbaric, you know, warfare. And that made like a knee jerk reaction from a group of artists that said, you know what, since the world no longer makes any sense, this world of civilization and regulation, you know what, our art doesn't have to make sense either. And they began this movement called Dadaism. And Dada itself was just like a you know, just like a blurted nonsense word. But the art that they created during that time was like this, you know, you've got like a, a little nest of hatched eggs and it's attached to a phone, but the phone is actually a shoe. And it was just like, all the art was just crazy. There's like a, like a famous one where it's like somebody turned a piece of like a urinal into a piece of art. So it was very much like um, an angry pushback on the nuttiness when we say we're all civilized and it's all organized and then we flip the script and can be completely insane because war is insane it's absolutely nuts there's no there's no logic to why this would be something that a civilization suddenly engages in that is the the madness of this is like they on one hand it feels like that's such a great example and i'm sorry to talk so much about that other than I mean, obviously, why the Dada phone? Because this character has clearly had their brain jumbled. The very thing that they're doing is making them freaking miserable. They know it. So what's the sense in being miserable? What's the sense in doing this? What's the sense in holding back from saying the things that need to be said? Maybe they feel like the way I feel is crazy because... I love somebody and I don't know how to talk to them and they won't talk to me, but I feel like they love me too. So this all feels crazy. So maybe I just do something crazy and I pick up the damn phone and I call. I feel like on the 29th, this person just wants to freaking pick up the phone and call. We got the four of cups, pick up the phone and spill their guts. Like I regret all of this. I regret all of the, the time we haven't been talking. I have all of these four of cups is big regret. It's, it's huge here we have like um these birds that kind of are in the um like a shelter from the sea and the sky but it's almost like they're half in like a crescent moon as well it feels like all of these thoughts it, it's almost like they're they're wanting to just express what's inside finally even though they, I don't know, this person feels like they have a very jumbled thought process as a whole. And maybe they just want to say it out loud. Look, I don't always get things clear in my head. Sometimes my head gets muddled. But I have a ton of regret that I just didn't tell you that point blank. Sometimes I get muddled. Sometimes I don't know why I'm doing this, something that's not even making me happy. I've tried a million times to figure out what to say to you. Now I just need to just, I guess convey how much I regret the fact that I haven't picked up the phone and called you before. I feel like this person has wanted to do this for so long. You go back to that five of cups card. They've wanted to do this for so long. And here they are very prim and proper. I, I think this character has like tried to suppress how they actually feel. Um, <clears throat> tried to act like everything is perfect in their world when they're a freaking mess underneath, tried to act like this is totally normal when it's, it's, there's nothing about this situation that makes them feel content. So why are they faking it? You know, it, it, there's an element of chaos in this, but at this point, it's kind of like them embracing it and saying what it is. We have the fool. I feel like this person's going to do something very brave and just say how they actually feel for a change. Hey, James Timmons, good to see you. Hi, Denisa. Um, we see them like a 
you know, a Van Gogh kind of character, a bit of um, like a tortured artist kind of energy here. And they, I feel like this person, this is going to sound really strange, but you notice how they stand on these pyramids. I think the best way I could describe this person is they are an individual who has a tremendous amount of connection to maybe the energy flow of the cosmos. Maybe they're highly intuitive. Maybe they're, they're a total empath and they have been wrestling with this because they've been trying to suppress it and act like they don't have that unique, um, you know, conduit to the, whatever the higher energies. And now they're just kind of freaking surrendering to it. I, I think everything that they have known that they should do when they try to suppress it and not do it, it creates, you know, like chaos in them. And I think one of the things that they needed to do for a long time was just pick up the phone and call her and suppressing has made it worse. Suppressing this, the way they feel instead of just doing the thing and just going with the flow has made it so much worse. We have justice here. Instead, it's like she tromps through their brain all day and all night. She or he, it doesn't matter. You notice how we have this repetitious thought process. These little dudes going up staircases, going up staircases, never ending cycle. The thing that isn't hasn't been handled correctly is a thing they cannot move on from, but then it became bigger and bigger, more of a, you know, I should have called her. I didn't, I should have reached out to her. I didn't every day that passes, it gets worse. I didn't do the thing every part of my soul said to do. And now I, there's more time that's passed and there's more awkwardness. And now the intensity is building and these little thought dudes keep trudging up these staircases endlessly in my brain about what I should have done and didn't, what I should have done and didn't. Why do they feel so strongly that they needed to just connect? Because all this has been about lack of communication and the need for it. All of this has been about the need for communication. Page of Cups, the tower. I feel like this character is so rattled by the idea of, like, I don't know if they believe that people are like, going to notice them, watch them, reach out and call to her. But they feel like they are somehow, they've got an audience around them all the time. And the idea of them displaying how their heart feels, it, it sets them up for massive either public failure or massive loss. Like if I say this, if I say how I feel, if I offer an apology and it's not received, then it's a total collapse. And it, this might have been a protective mechanism for themselves because there's so much concern about how it might work out and how it could collapse instead of progress, which, you know, I, I think that's a fair and understandable concern, right? But <clears throat> judgment in the reverse. Yeah, they're, they really believe that she's not going to answer the phone and that's what's made them not reach out. It's that it, it's like this character has been crippled with fear over what might happen if they do the thing. But then when they don't do the thing, the pressure gets worse because I should have done the thing. I should have picked up the phone and talked to her. But they're so convinced it's going to be over. There's no way this can be fixed. And I, I think that became this huge, huge, huge negative mindset. And it pushed them further away from doing the thing that their soul said, hey, you need to do this. You need to call. You need to talk to her. So if this is reaching this crescendo where they're finally saying, you know what, this is so freaking miserable. I know it's over anyway. So I, I don't have anything to lose at this point because I basically waited so long that I know there's no way back. So I may as well just call up and spit it all out. So this feels like somebody is making a phone call that's going to just be like, blah, is, is everything on the, the 29th. Tell me about the blah part of this. Okay, six of one. Strangely, it's incredibly liberating for them. Well, yeah, because you're finally listening to what your subconscious was saying, like continuously. <sighs> the fool again, the seven of pentacles. I feel like once this person starts talking, they just can't stop. I think it is such a 
flood of words. I think it actually surprisingly makes him feel so good to finally get this off their chest, to finally say how long they've wanted to say all of this, to just own it. The very thing they were most afraid of is to say how they really felt and then risk rejection. And now they're like, screw it. I've already been, I know it's over. I know it's it's been too long. I know it's a rejection. So I'm, now I'm just going to say it all. And that is so empowering for this character. So what is it that they're really saying? Can I see what that is? Oh my God, five of cups that they have been utterly and completely devastated that apparently a queen of pentacles stays in their mind. And with this hanged man, I mean, this is like layers, right? We have like this, this, um, this tree thing is like a, a person and then hanging from the tree thing is a person inside of that. It's, it's as if they're saying, look, she's still in the upright. They think the world of, of her apparently, but they're saying that they've been devastated because she's super important in their life. But with the hanged man, all these delays upon delays, all these, like they can't get out of their head. They haven't been able to get out of their head. They haven't been able to get out of her orbit. They think very highly of her, but tell me about the hanged man. Cause that's seeing things from a different perspective. It's also martyrdom. It's also um, delays. Seven of Wands, Two of Wands. They're literally, I, I, what I think this is, is that they're saying they were convinced that she was too good for them. So they hid, they created more obstacle, they stood continuously at a Two of Wands, but always hoping she would somehow come save them, come race to get them. They waited for a long time, hoping she would come to them. That's what I think this is. This is the what they're finally admitting. Um, what what do they want from her at this point? Strength card, Nine of Cups, the Devil. You know, again, I think this is such a huge flood of words. <laughs> I say, what do they want from her? I think they want her to, first off, <sighs> I think they want her to tell them that she's been obsessed and crazy about them. I think they want her to be still the person who will be strong enough to say, to say more truth than what they're able to. I mean, maybe not more truth, but I still think they want her to tell them that she wants them, that, that she's been loyal to them, that they are her wish fulfillment. And so, so with that devil, I'm reading that as like crazy intense passion. It's like they want her to say, I've been totally hooked on you. High Priestess, Ten of Wands, to say we're not that different. You've been driving me crazy too. I feel your energy too. There's some raw, real connection. And uh, can we just stop playing games and dancing around it? They want her to be the brave one to say, can we just stop dancing around it and just acknowledge what this connection is? Lay down the burdens and just like go ahead and, and embrace what this connection is. They're still scared, I think for them to be the ones to say this. That's that's what it looks like to me. Are they gonna be able to say this? With the world card sideways, we have the 10 of coins upright. I mean, this doesn't look super promising yet. It looks like they will get to being able to say that, but they're really hoping she can say it first. World card sideways, I look at it as a two-way street sometimes. It's it's going to be a changing um, conversation, a life-altering conversation for them regardless. And it could lead to the Ten of Coins, both people opening up fully and completely. But I said, are they going to be able to like get out of their own fears of like acknowledging how important this connection is to them? And it, it kind of says that although they definitely will, it may not be in this first conversation, 
but the desire to establish how much they want to continue to converse and and reestablish a connection is very much a part of this. Um, but to have a fully, I, I think if she's the one who lays it all out for them, I think this will be go time. But at minimum, they're trying to to establish some kind of a two-way conversational thing where they can at least communicate with her now again. Outcome. What's outcome here? <clears throat> Ace of Swords. This is the this is the the truth time. So all the things that have been withheld, all the nerves that have been in the way, all the fears that have been in the way, finally cutting through all of it. It's time for truth. It's time to take action and it's time to go after wish fulfillment. This is the starting point of genuine conversation. Now, we didn't see what's going on on her side, on the Queen of Pentacles side. We only see that on the 29th, we have somebody who kind of is just ready to pick up the phone and just make the phone call that they have been petrified to make because at this point they think it's too late anyway. So they've got nothing to lose. Um, that's really what this storyline was about is somebody who's hit the end of their misery and worry factor. Cause it's like, well, I know it's already over. So now I'm beyond the fear of, of having a rejection. Cause I already know that I've been rejected. I know she's, she's fed up with me. I know there's no point in me not just saying everything at this point. Um, oddly, I think, I don't know, in this storyline, it looks like there's actually hope here. I don't know, but it begins with a very real, um, like this huge, like purge of all these things they should have said a long time ago. That's what it looks like is a, a purging phone call on the 29th. All right, you guys, I'm going to leave this here. Thank you so much for giving us a thumbs up and subscribing. If you do enjoy my storytelling and would like more of it, please do support my free channel with those free actions. It's the only way I can keep having this channel. So it means the world to me. I thank you guys so much. Hey, Tammy. Hi, Rage. Good to see everybody. Take care, guys. Bye.